say anything's possible You got a dream like you never seen obstacles do this but too much rubbish is going on right now we've got people on tv the news etc they say things and people say a lot of things but when you come under the guise of an educated person you really should watch what you say especially if you're a historian the whites have become black a particular sort of violent destructive nihilistic gangster culture has become the fashion and black and white boy and girl operate in this language together this language which is wholly false which is this jamaican patois that's been intruded in england and they're poor they can't get jobs they're searched by the police the black male culture militates it's, against it's, education it's, it's, i know you did not just go on tv and equate black culture to criminality like seriously in this day and age a so-called intelligent man a so-called educated man can really get away with saying these things i'm not jamaican but i'm offended at what you said about Jamaican people. He equated the Jamaican accent to not being educated and the breakdown of the English language not being educated. Here are a few reasons why I think that's a really stupid thing to say, Mr. Starkey. I know you're a historian, so I don't even need to quote dates. You should know this, right? Isn't it ironic that you blame Jamaican people for looting? When if you think about it, the existence of Jamaica as a country is a consequence of England's looting. In fact, look at countries like Australia. Australia only exists because you needed someone to send all your criminals. Most Australians are not black. Please, I'm not saying all Australians are criminals now, but how did that country get populated? You talk about Patwa influencing the English language. But again, that's very ironic because Patwa, you know, Jamaicans are essentially Africans speaking English. So even the language, really and truly, it's your influence over our language. I'm, you know, why don't they speak Yoruba, Igbo, and Shui in Jamaica? That's very, very ignorant. To take Jamaica, a small island, and then take one stereotype from this small island and then merge the whole race of people who happen to be the same color as me or different variations of it into one race. We speak thousands of different languages. We come from hundreds of different cities, different tribes, and you just turn us into one generic little group, black. And this is a group that was created in this part of the world because in Africa, before colonialization, we all refer to each other by our tribes, not by the colors of our skin. You say black culture, have you been influenced by Somalis, Nigerians, Ugandans? No. You, you talk about um, in it, but that doesn't, I've never heard of Jamaicans don't say in it. That was started here. Cockneys say that. Why are you putting that on us? It has nothing to do with race. It's class. And this class system was created by the aristocracy that you so happily support. So how can you turn around and say that black people are the people that are causing all this looting? Was it not a white man that shot a black guy that kicked off this right in the first place? You want to talk about the influences that Africans have had on your people, that black people have had on your people? Then let's talk about the Moors who came over to Spain and taught Europeans to bathe twice a day when Europeans were still bathing once or twice every couple of months because they were afraid they would peel their skins. Talk about the Moors who brought pipe-borne water, medicine, astrology and astronomy over here to Europe when you guys were still bashing each other over the heads with clubs. And no matter how hard you try to erase this from history, there's still evidence left in Spain. In fact, if you look to literature, a lot, of the, a lot of my claims are still justified because, I mean, look, Shakespeare, who inspired him to write the character Othello, was based on a moor. The first wave of Jamaicans that came to this country came after fighting for your queen in World War II. They were in the front line. Yet every time I watch a World War II movie, Negroes are nowhere to be seen, even in black and white movies. Explain that. You, you talk about how our culture is looting, but tell me, how did we end up here in the first place? Were my ancestors not looted? Hmm? Did we just swim here? British Airways didn't exist then, you know. I mean, I know you're a Tudor historian, but come on now, only an intellectually circumcised baboon would make some of the claims that you made the other night. If you want to see evidence that we have nothing to do with looting, go to the, you know, go to the museums, yeah? British Museum, go there. The only difference between us and you is that we don't charge people to see stuff that we've stolen. You want to talk about equating black culture to gang culture, but the first gangs in this country came after the World War and they were Corsican, Jewish, Italian. I think there were a few French in there. This was after the war. There were the black people in this. Even if we move on to more modern times, the Cray twins were not black. The A-team was not black. You look at the greatest robberies, the greatest, greatest ever acts of looting ever. You want to talk about old school? Let's talk about slavery. Let's talk about the, the, the crown jewels. Where did they come from? Who looted that? You talk about modern times. Who's looting right now? Is it Jamaicans in Iraq looting? Last time I checked, it wasn't Buffalo soldiers going around killing people. That was your boys going around killing people. But you don't mind that. It's okay when white people loot, right? 
That's spreading civilization. Andreas Breivik, he shot down 80, well, he killed 85 people. Shot about 30 or 40 of them. Some say he killed about 90 people. He injured more than 100 people. <coughs> now, when have you ever heard that a black guy went on a shooting spree like that? We can't even afford the bullets. Let's put it this way. There are more black-on-black -black crimes because when black people kill each other, it's black-on-black -black crime. When a white guy kills another guy, it's just crime. Hmm. Hitler killed about 16 million people, 18 million depending on who you ask, and Stalin killed about 20 million. They were all white. That's white on white crime, right? Now, let's talk about um, football hooliganism, you know, that came to rise in the 80s. Uh, not a lot of black football hooligans was a predominantly white thing. Before hip-hop became cool here, you guys were going out and beating each other up and even killing each other over football games. You've got that. And this gave rise, of course, the National Front and, uh, you know, the much younger EDL. You want to talk about rap music? And how negative that's been. Rap music originally was a conscious and um, very intellectual movement until guess who permeated it? That's right. Who owns the record labels, the distribution companies? Who's selling it? Who's, who's in charge of PR? Who's in charge of marketing? Not us. Who owns these channels? Not us. Who decides what gets on the channels? Not us. Most of the people buying these records now are 16-year-old white girls in middle-class homes. In fact, if you go downstairs, your little niece is probably listening to Soldier Boy right now. But you can't blame our music because, I mean, for goodness sake, look at rock music. You're telling me that's peaceful? Slipknot? Merlin Manson? Is, is, is that the positive influence you're talking about? I mean, seriously, we can be subjective. We can go tit for tat all day. But really, it's black music? I don't even blame media anymore. I think I'm very, very fair. I blame ourselves too. Black people, we're at fault. And I blame this directly on you. All you comedians that go on stage and make minstrels out of yourselves and call it black culture and all the audience who laughs and claps for this kind of rubbish all you rappers that come out and talk about pimping out our black sisters and encouraging the youth to go out and steal i'm not saying all of you do it but those of you who do are a disgrace to our race you guys come out and say oh it's just music but then at the same time at the same time it's like oh we're keeping it real make up your mind are you lying or are you telling the truth if you're telling the truth then you're part of the problem and you guys need to go all you black celebrities that see all these things happening, see all these people taking the piss out of our culture and do absolutely nothing, do nothing. You don't stand up, you don't speak out for us, you just keep quiet, you make your money. You guys are part of the problem because the youth are looking to you. I'm not famous, you guys are. Why aren't you guys doing anything about it? We are the most inviting people. We let people come and we let them exploit our culture. When a white guy comes and he's not too good at rapping, oh, we love it. A white boy comes doing comedy in black uh, venues or wherever, we accept him. But whenever we go to another venue and we try to do these things, do they accept us? You go to India, why don't you go become a Bollywood star, see if they accept you? They won't. But if an Indian guy starts rapping tomorrow, we'll all love him. I'm not saying we should stop loving, but we should start understanding that we should hold people to the same standards that we hold ourselves and hold up, and other people hold us to. We should, we should stop taking this rubbish. So next time, when you're sitting down... You know, and you're listening to you're listening to a guy and saying, "Oh, he's too political. He's not black enough." Remember, it hurts when someone else says it to you. So don't say it. Don't say it yourself. Pick up a book and read it, man. We are all individuals. We all have our own ancestries. We all have our own things that we contribute to the world. We're not worthless like these people make us out to be. And also remember that not all white people are racist. Most white people are cool. Most people of every race are cool. It's people like Starkey I have a problem with. Because the same way when we do something, we make the rest of ourselves look bad, he just made the rest of white people look bad. Because a lot of black people now are going to think, oh, all white people are racist, and that's not right. We should all get on. Color is such a stupid thing to hate someone for, and I really wish the world would move on. In conclusion, Mr. Starkey, you, my friend, are a typical example of the adage, a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. You are an educated illiterate. And um, I remember you, you, you tried to pass off sounding white as sounding educated, and said that if I heard David Lammy, I'd think he was white because he's educated. Well, if I heard Frank Bruno, I'd think he's white. He doesn't sound too clever now, does he? They say anything's possible. You got a dream like you've never seen obstacles. 